finding the right E36 was tough. A lot of these cars are beat to death by the Drift Boys. <laughs> They're just got tons of different crazy modifications on them. They're cut up, fenders are busted, smashed, bumpers are all messed up. <laughs> and you know, I live in the Northeast, so the biggest problem here is rust. So this car actually came from Georgia and uh, was brought up here by somebody else that bought it and they had too many other projects that they were working on and they needed to unload the car. I saw that it was listed on Facebook, called on it that day. I had my cousin go take a look at it and I had him actually buy the car because there were other people looking at this car. So I had had to jump on it. He told me, Ken, it's a rust-free example. There's not an ounce of rust on it and the car actually ran and drove pretty well. So that's all I really cared about other than the fact that it was an OBD1 car that came with the manual from the factory. This was an M50 five-speed uh, OBD1 car. If you're not familiar, it is possible to do an LS swap in an OBD2 car, it's just a lot more difficult. With the OBD1, there's just less emission things that I have to worry about down the road, and uh, it's just a lot easier to do. So. OBD1 car, manual transmission, no rust E36, jump on those. To me, it didn't even need an engine. The car was lowered on eBay coilovers and it had some wheel spacers and some camber going on. It was also straight piped. My father, who had to drive it back home, refused to drive it any further. It was deafeningly loud. <laughs> This one was a really good running and driving example. If you're wondering why anybody would pull that engine out, it's slow. It's not very fast, 189 horsepower, supposedly, what, 15.5 second quarter mile? So, not, not very quick. The interior of the car is actually in really great shape. Typical E36 things like the glove box hanging off and the door panels hanging off, but the headliner is in great shape. The uh, seats are a little chewed up, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep them. They weigh about 75 pounds a piece. That's pretty heavy. Uh, everything else in the car worked. AC even worked on the car. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep it. We're gonna see, uh, or I might have to put the AC in later, but I would like to find a way to keep it at some point. I know some of you guys at this point are asking yourselves, bro, how do you fit such a big engine that's six liters inside of a really small car? Well, the engine actually isn't as big as you think it is. It's shorter than the six cylinder engine that is in the car. Uh, it's just a little bit wider if you take into consideration the exhaust manifold on the left side and the intake and all the other components on the right side. And even though it's an iron block, it's only gonna weigh about 90 pounds more than the engine that I'm taking out. So uh, with the transmission behind it, it should, st and the engine sitting further back, I still should have pretty good weight distribution on the car. If you see in this photo, physical size of the engine isn't really as big as most people think it is being a big old V8. Got big old V8 in there. So uh, just because you have the cam inside the block and not dual overhead cam, uh, the size of the heads on the block are a lot smaller. So you're able to fit it into a lot of different applications, not just a E36 BMW. People put these engines in Mazda Miata.
Toyota MR2s, uh, you name it, this engine's been swapped into it. Even Mustangs, for you Mustang folks out there. As I could tell as I drove the car around, the steering column would almost lock up as I turned left. Come to find out the E36s are notorious for having U-joint problems on their steering rack. So uh, whether you're doing an LS swap or not, I highly recommend you look into New Age Hot Rod's E36 steering shaft upgrade. Not only does it create a little bit more space, especially for your, a swap, it's, uh, it's stiffer, it's lighter, it's easier to put on than the old one if you're gonna replace it, and it doesn't have faulty U-joints that will break down over time and cause the steering column to lock, which would not be good. No, you don't want to do that. So uh, check them out. It's right on their website. Uh, link is in the description below. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them in the next segment. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.